The world of design is changing at a pace that it's hard to keep up. The advancements in technology and the increasing awareness of the environment as well as the way that we use spaces today are some of the factors that are going to affect the way that interior designers will design spaces in the future or at least that's what the professionals predict. But how is this going to affect the world of interior design? And what is the future of interior design gonna look like? In today's video, guys, I wanna share with you the possible future of the interior design world. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If it's your first time here, my name is Andrea, and I make videos about interior design in this channel. So if that's something that you're into, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell because I upload videos every single week. Okay guys, so on today's video, I wanna share with you what is the future of interior design gonna look like? So let's just get right into the video. So you've probably heard of the word virtual reality and it's one of those concepts that are truly revolutionizing many sectors and industries all around the world. Virtual reality consists of this simulated experience where the idea is to replace your reality with this sort of virtual um, computer-generated environment. For you to get into this virtual reality world, you have to place a helmet or a virtual reality headset and you will be immersed into this new world with nothing left from the real world. Virtual reality is nowadays used for entertainment such as gaming, it's also used for some professions such as aviation, journalism and medicine and it's also used for leisure, so for example traveling to new places in a virtual way, of course. Although this concept has been used very sparingly in architecture, it has really not become an industry standard tool for interior designers and architects. Although many professionals are confident that this new technology is really gonna change the way that we design spaces. So just imagine showing your client a 3D model of a space with the use of virtual reality where they can actually walk around the space and experience the space in a type of three-dimensional environment. That would be really, really cool. It might be really hard for us to picture what this is gonna look like, but I feel like 30 years ago, no one really would have thought that today we would have all this fancy software such as AutoCAD, SketchUp, Revit, Rhino, 3ds Max, where you can create these 3D models that are very realistic and I feel like it's the same with this type of new technologies. We probably cannot even picture what is that going to look like, but for sure it's something that may happen in the not so far future. Smart homes are something that we already see in homes nowadays and this concept of optimizing your experience at home is something that has been around for some years now. So basically guys, a smart home is a house that has this sort of integrated system where so many things such as your appliances and your devices can be controlled from anywhere with the use of technology. So basically all these devices are interconnected through Wi-Fi and you can control things such as the house temperature the lighting, the security access, and automated blinds, among others. What the experts are predicting is that the smart homes will basically become smarter and most structures and elements inside of your home will be highly optimized. So there is this Italian company called Tipic and they create a lot of innovative products for your home. So they're all about innovation and new ways to make your home a smart home. There is this sink that they created 
that turns into a counter top surface. I think that is really, really cool. So it's worth to check them out and see what they're up to. So guys, I am a big believer that homes are just gonna keep getting smarter as a result of the emerging technology that we are seeing this year. So it's really important that as designers, we are updated on the products that the companies have to offer in the short, medium and long term for homes and for buildings. The creation of social media has made interior design available for nearly everyone and really that is something that we didn't have 20 years ago before the internet was around. If you wanted to design your home, the only way that you could get inspiration from was magazines, books, movies. But today, with the use of social media, you can literally look at thousands, if not millions, of designs to get inspired from. And this is really cool, but there is a disadvantage to it. And that is the lack of originality when it comes to interior spaces. A sad reality in the interior design industry is that some designers will copy other interior designs and they will just make minimal modifications, which has really made a lot of spaces look very similar in the real world as well as in social media. So some clients are okay with that, but there are clients who want their home to be like no other. They want their space to be a one-of-a-kind, original, unique design. And this is where the interior designers that are able to create custom and original designs are gonna be needed. So it's very important that as a designer, you do everything to try to create original spaces that have never been created before. Because this type of work is gonna be in high demand and if you are able to provide with this type of spaces, you're truly gonna get very far in this career. Along the lines of social media comes this very much talked about topic which is our mental health. You probably know that the use of social media has considerably affected the mental health of many people, which has led to depression, to anxiety, and to loneliness. And really, as a designer, we should very much feel the responsibility of designing spaces that are going to improve the mental health and the state of mind of the occupants. This is something that we truly have to account for moving forward because I feel like there's a very strong correlation between a space and the person who uses that space. So basically what I'm trying to say is the way that you design space is going to affect that person's mood, that person's uh, level of comfort when they are occupying that space. So contributing to a better mental health through the interior environments that we create can be actually done by many ways. So some examples would be the lighting, the color, the acoustics, the sound, the materials that you use. So this is something worth looking into it because we do have this responsibility of making someone feel good when they are inside a space that we design for them. So if you can create a space where people can emotionally connect to it and feel comfortable and feel happy, you're truly gonna get very far in this career. The design of commercial spaces have been affected by the event of the pandemic. Nowadays, Crowded places are not really desired at all and people rather to have some distance from others when using these public spaces. So this is something that as a designer you have to really keep in mind 
that the needs for people have changed considerably. So one example would be a seating area in a restaurant. You gotta make sure that you space the tables apart enough for people to actually feel comfortable when they are in that space. So really this primarily applies to commercial spaces such as it would be libraries or restaurants or nightclubs or bars or gyms, amenity centers and all of this is spaces that are always very crowded. Guys, it's kind of insane to think that you can print an object from a printable file, but that is what three-dimensional printing is. And this is another of those concepts that are just mind-blowing that it's happening in 2022. And this concept of 3D printing is already used uh, for many applications. Primarily, it's used for industrial and commercial use, but the professionals are predicting that in the future, architects and designers will actually be able to print out uh, the 3D models of homes and buildings in a very cost-effective way. And one of the reasons that 3D printing is very popular is the cost. You can print very complex shapes and objects at a lower cost than it would take to use other manufacturing methods. So it's a concept that is here to stay and it's worth knowing about because we might be using these 3D printers in the future. So sustainable design is not only a trending topic, but it's also of high importance when it comes to applying it to be able to better protect our environment. And I'm not gonna really dive into what sustainable design is. I can make an entire video about that if you want me to. But basically, sustainable interior design means designing spaces with materials that are either non-toxic, that can be recycled, or that have been recycled already. It means designing with materials that can last you for a really long time without the need to replace them. It means designing with local materials. It means designing with materials that are eco-friendly. So there are really a number of ways that you can implement sustainable design into your spaces. So keep that in mind because this is a topic that's not gonna go anywhere. If not, it's just gonna continue getting more popular and we are gonna be pushed towards sustainable interior design. It's gonna be something that we are going to be encouraged to do each time more. And a lot of the companies are just making this switch from traditional materials to sustainable materials. And you're gonna have a lot of clients that are gonna want sustainable materials for their homes. So it's something that you should know and you should be familiar with in the interior design industry. Today, we are living a very different life from a couple of years back and also from 30 years back. So part of it has to do with the pandemic, but not all of it is related to the pandemic. Our lifestyle today is very different from what it was 30 years ago. And our needs when we are at home or inside any type of space have also changed throughout the years. An example of this would be dining rooms. In the past, it was very important and it was more like a non-negotiable space to have a dining room. Even though you only use it twice a year for Christmas and Thanksgiving, today a lot of people do not really need a dining room or do not really want a dining room and they rather have a space where they're going to be using on a daily basis. So as a designer, the most important thing that you should do is listen to your client needs because not everyone has the same needs and this just has changed drastically in the last few years. So listening to what your client has to say in regards to what their lifestyle is and what do they do inside their home 
how do they work? Do they work at home or do they entertain a lot? Or do they prefer to have a bigger TV room and not a dining table? And that you take in consideration that today there is not a right or a wrong layout for a home. And depending on what the goals are of the client, you have to take different approaches when you are creating space. Okay, so that was today's video. I hope that you learned anything today. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up so that I know that you like this type of content and I can continue making more. I will see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.